Now my nose drew me to these. These are a few flowered leeks. They're a non-native plant and they are invasive and it is illegal to spread them in the wild. Their name is Allium paradoxum or the few flowered leek and they're part of the Allium or onion family. Uh, on their leaves they're quite easy to identify because on their leaves they've got a raised keel in the middle which you know is easily distinguishable from bluebells which quite commonly grow in similar areas. They've also got a triangular cross sec section. All parts can actually be eaten. Its flower at the top is surrounding these small bluebells which are immature bulbs and when they drop obviously that's how, how the plant mainly reproduces. It's an asexual plant primarily. What I'm going to do is just collect a few in this area here. It's going to follow the next of them down where they go into the ground here. It's really light soil here. You can see got the little bulb here and the plant connected. So this is cow parsley, or wild chervil, otherwise known. Uh, its Latin name is Anthriscus sylvestris, and it's quite similar to hogweed or giant hogweed. So you've got to be really careful when you're identifying it, because it can look really similar. And giant hogweed is obviously really quite dangerous. And even hogweed in large amounts can be quite, quite dangerous. Really, it can blister you when when the liquid gets on your skin and comes in contact with the UV rays. Now uh, this is quite common, it is edible although it has an unpleasant flavour and it's closely related to the parsley family, the um, carrot and other hogweeds so, and, and hemlock in fact so yeah really nice flowers and once you, once you see it and you probably see it next to something like hogweed you'll be able to tell the difference but really small white petals on it. So here we actually have some cow parsley next to hogweed. Now the shoots when they actually come up the hogweed has a similar shoot to this so it's easily mistaken but actually the leaves are totally different these have got much more kind of fern looking leaves and these are much more spread out broader and slightly furry to touch and the, the stems are quite haired as well. The stems on the hogweed haven't actually come up yet but no it's good. These are, the Latin name is Heraclium spondilius for hogweed and it can be confused with the giant hogweed so it's really important that you you know you know what you're picking. You can actually see where the main stem is actually going to start to uncurl so it's nestled down in there at the moment and it's going to come up and shoot up in the air and spread out with an umbrella of flowers. And these are called lords and ladies. They have really nice flowering parts. Sometimes you'll come across these in the woods. Feathers. They're always handy to take. They take a spark really well. I'll use this because I'm going to try start a fire with the bow drill today.
Really happy with how that came guys. It's the first time I've done a uh, bow drill fire in a few years. First time I've lit a fire successfully I mean from one. I've seemed to, you know, I've practiced a few times and started making embers but no this is the first time I've done a fire so it's really good. So what I'm looking for is just a nice straight bit of timber. Just got to suspend my cooking pot over it. I want it to be substantial enough to hold pot of water while it's boiling. I'm going to use this which is hazel as mentioned before in previous video. Really good plant. It coppers it as well. It gives you some straight timbers. This has naturally got a fork in it here which I can use. I can trim this here and I can peg down the actual pole itself with it. Now some of you may have noticed on my pack walking in that I've had a new addition to it. This is just a normal Molly bottle bag, similar to the Maxpedition or Condor one that's available. This is a, just a non-branded version that I got. And inside here now, I've upgraded to a clean canteen. This is the standard, not the wide mouth version, but it does have the addition of a stainless steel lid. I opted for this 
for the simple reason that if I've boiled water in this and it's still hot but I need to close it, I can do. It's also a bit more hard wearing. On there I've also got a nice hidden woodman patch. I've also upgraded my mug to a titanium mug. This is a Tokes titanium 750 milliliters mug. It's really nice and it comes with its own lid which I keep in this section along with a few different condiments and hot chocolates, knives and forks and such. The lid fits on there nicely and the thing I like about this one is it acts as a cup and also a billy can. It has a bale handle which means I can boil water now. I can hang it off this and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to boil some water and cook up some noodles. I'm going to put them to rest on the side and then I'm going to fry up some of these few flowered leeks that I collected earlier. I've also got some pre-cooked chicken that I have, have to use so I thought I might as well bring that up just to add a little bit of meat in. But no, it should be really nice. I also got this from the Hidden Woodsman. Wanted to take advantage of the shipping. Didn't just want to pay all that for a, for a patch even though it probably would have been a bit cheaper. But I got this which is their Tinder pouch and like Joe Robinette uses I'm going to be using it for my food. It's really really good quality Kodora fabric. And it's a really good size actually. I've got in here now, I've got my noodles, they're just dry that I'm going to be cooking up. I've got some soy sauce in here. And I also have a few little peppers and one chilli in there. Very small pepper. But yeah, this is from the Hidden Woodsman. Really nice. Recommend it. But no, I think it's about time to start cooking up, so I'm going to give this its first use. It's a virgin pot. I've given it a quick wash out of home but it's gathered some of the forest in there as usual. So I'm just going to pour in some water. One thing I really like about this mug is the fact that it has these markings on the side on the both the outside and inside and they're in metric and imperial measurements. Another nice feature on the lid is if you push it to the side, the top handle can't fall down. Really clever. And just makes a difference for when you're trying to fiddle with getting that off. Just support it on its way down. You don't want to lose your water. And then I'll just build up the fire ever so slightly. There's plenty of timber around here to use. I don't need to be chopping any logs or splitting them up. Plenty of dead fallen branches on the floor. I'm quite an advocate of using what's around really. If I'm going to be staying for a night or camp or you know, it's a bit damp, then I'll start thinking about splitting timber up, but most of the time small branches can be found relatively close. Right, let that boil up, then I'll introduce the noodles and I'm going to boil them for about five minutes. Then I'll take them out, put them back into the bag and seal it, and just let them steam themselves a little bit. And that just allows me to then use the pot to cook up the few flowered leeks and the peppers that I have. And a little bit of oil and you know see how they taste should be really nice just going to see how the water's doing some steam building up and bubbles on the side so that's promising it was really nice to get fire started using the bow drill method. It's been something I've been practicing over the last few weeks with a friend and uh, every time we've managed to get really good smoke production but the embers just haven't formed. And that's part and parcel of trying new and different types of woods, new combinations and also part and parcel of it was you know not having the right uh, setup really. We were using cord that just had a bit too much give in it and it kept slacking off at the last push where you really have to drive it. So I got myself some new 550 power cord and obviously I reaped the benefit so I think part of that is, you know, preparation of your materials and, uh, you know, 
sourcing a, a correct piece of timber it's got to be really really dry we were doing it in quite damp conditions so um, the hearth that I used today and the spindle were made of ash and that's a set that I've been practicing with um, and like I said I've just been getting a lot of smoke so it was really good to actually get an ember here today Boiling. She's boiling. Got a nice steady boil now. It was quite quick. It was about ten or fifteen minutes. I said I was going to time it, but I didn't take note of the time at all. <laughs> Just going to add these noodles in here. I'm going to boil them again for about five minutes, just let them fatten up and if I do need to add any more water I can do. What I'm just doing here now is just removing all this kind of root and soil material from these few flowered leeks and any kind of dead and unwanted bits. I'm just going to go for the greener leaves and get rid of the slightly yellowing ones really really pungent and you can eat all parts of these including the little bowl bits I'm gonna go for the very small ones not really the any large ones and there's a prime example you have gotta always remember when you're sorting these out and you have these little bubils, which are basically the bulbs. If you're going to get rid of them, do actually get rid of them in the fire. You don't want to be dropping them because they are an invasive species. And it can change a landscape pretty quickly. Not that you don't want these around, but it is illegal to spread them here in the wild in the UK. So we must respect that and respect our native plants but got quite a nice little hole here and I'm going to save a few to add right at the very end to impart more of a flavour because a lot of that flavour does get lost during the process of cooking so all of this waste now is going to go straight onto the fire The noodles are really fattened up now. What I'm going to do is just take these out, strain the water, and then put these back in the bag. actually not much water but what I'm going to try to do is just pour these over the few flowered leeks just to get some of the like, soil and creepy crawlies off and then I'll use the rest of this just to drain. So now that they're drained, I'm just going to plop them into this bag. They can sit and steam for a little while. And 
then in here I'm going to put some oil, cut off the leaks. Just going to add some oil into this now. Then I'll heat that up over the fire. I'm going to put these few flowered leeks in now. Put it the forest floor. Also got my two chilies. I'm going to put in a little bit of spice and a little bit of heat. Put the fire back up a little bit, so I'm just going to get these heating over the flame. I need to move the fire back a little bit. A little bit more. You can hear that oil sizzling already, so they're not going to take too long to cook. I'm just going to cook them for about three or four minutes. This is where I'm going to put my gloves on just so I can grab it and give it a shake. This is sizzling away nicely now, I'm just going to check on that. It's getting there. Oh, it smells mighty fine. Mighty, mighty fine. Picked up nicely now. I'm going to add a bit of soy sauce in there. That will just lift anything that has stuck to the bottom. Look at this one. Oh, very garlicky. Right, now for the PS de la Resistance. I've got some little chicken fillets pre cooked. Just going to add these in. Then I'm going to reintroduce the noodles and give them a little bit more on the heat just to warm this meat through. I didn't have much time today so I didn't want to go through the effort of cooking up any meat but quite easily could have done. You know, we could have done it a similar method, we could have done it then with the uh, few flowered leeks. But I had this and it had to be eaten so why not utilise it? It comes in its own little chopping packet. Give that a little stir around together. You don't have to take your noodles out when you're cooking. I just have got a small pot and opted to do that, but you could always just add your oil and fry and fry everything up together. But I thought I might as well utilise the bag. The noodles are still warm. Put the lid back on now. Give that a good shake. You can see some of the meat starting to come to the top. I'll just encourage that with a little bit of a turn. Ooh, just 
taken overboard. There's a small mug and I'm really putting it to the limits today on its first go. So that looks well mixed. I'm now I'm going to put that back over the fire just to warm it through. Looks and smells ready. It's hot all the way to the top, which is good. Just going to give it a little stir. Maybe put it back on for a few more seconds. So this is all cooked up now. Just going to taste it. Give it a try. Try and get some of these. Little bubbles. Kind of potatoey texture. Not very garlicky. <laughs> the uh, the dish as a whole, slight taste, but not much. Definitely not not nice. Hmm. There's a bit of crunch there that tasted really oniony. That was nice. Well, I'm gonna sit and enjoy this. Almost done. Very tasty. Just gonna give this a quick swell out. Giving this a bit of a wash now. Let me just put some water in there, give it a good swirl around. And there we are, fairly clean. I'll do the rest of that washing when I get home. I'm only here for the day. So that was a really successful day. Um, nice wild edibles, really good meal. You know, successfully got the fire started with a bow drill, which was really, really happy. Um, I'm just going to sit down and have a little pudding before I pack up fire's almost dead now so it's a good time to you know make get on my way these are amazing by the way they're from decathlon white chocolate cereal bars with cranberry and strawberry they're so delicious been keeping a few in here it's about that time now start thinking about heading off so as usual i'm going to just make sure this fire is completely out I drag that to one side and not be scuff up the earth. This will allow heat to dissipate. Now I'll sit here for a few more minutes and then I'll scatter them and cover over the fire. bring some of this material over. And the material 
know that I moved earlier. I can brush right back over to this guy's the site where you had the fire. And I'll sit here again for another minute or two just to make sure I don't see any little wisps of smoke. If I do, I'll strip the area back and reevaluate. Thanks ever so much for checking in and uh, watching the videos. Hope to see you on the next one. Take care.